It's time for a coffee break. On this week's coffee break, I revisit episode 15 with Marissa Santoro and Overall, that episode was about communicating with intention, but what I really liked about the part that is on this coffee break was she gave a really easy, tangible rule to use in your day-to-day conversations. She goes over the rule of three, which is a way to kind of organize your thoughts and how to clearly state them. So she explains it, what it is, and how to use it in this segment. So I hope you enjoy. Also, you can look for another episode with Marissa next week. I talked to her again on the show to talk about her new book, Own Your Authority, which is so good. So take a listen next week for another episode with Marissa Santoro. You're not alone if you found it challenging to stay connected with your friends, family, and even your coworkers during the past year. Now there's a way to easily send unique personalized gifts they'll always remember. Greetable has perfectly proportioned personalized presents that are ideal for remembering those birthdays, anniversaries, or special moments. Upload photos, craft a special message, and select fun gifts for your customized Greetable box so loved ones and friends can unfold and proudly display it at work, home, or anywhere happiness is welcome. It's a super fun and easy way to stay connected with those you care about. Use code LEADINTOIT at checkout to get 15% off your order. Now, on to the show. So you keep saying be intentional. What would you say is that, is there a first step to being intentional? Is there a few steps? How does that work? (laughs) Oh, wow. That's a great question. Um, I call it the rule of three. Um, Actually, the rule of three applies everywhere in your life. I even teach my kids this. Whenever they ask me for something like, mom, I need need something on Roblox. That's a video game. I need something. (laughs) I always say, don't talk to me until you come up with a rule of three. And, And what that means is, before you ask me for something or before you're going to ask for something, or, or even if you're just not even asking, you're just setting an agenda, you want to talk about something that's being held up, approval, whatever it might be. Before you go in, just have three things in your hip pocket that you want to hit beats to. It's about hitting the beat. You can hit those beats and make sure you walk away with three things. And I, I often coach people to say, you know, well, here's where we are. And then you, you outline it for them. This is number one problem, number two problem, number three. And, here, and then you just open up on the table what you want to talk about. That also helps the listener because now you're getting to the point, you know, going back to what I said before, Mm -hmm. I live and breathe by the rule of three. I think if most people in this world did that, meetings would be a lot shorter. People would (laughs) would come across a lot more clear. There wouldn't be any defensive acts or reactions or be responses instead of reactions. So yeah, that's sort of like the magic formula, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) So would you say that's the first step to... Um, speaking without apology? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a story or somebody who you coach that you can share about when, how they applied this and how they saw a difference? Oh, I have tons and tons <laughs> of stories. <laughs> well, I would say, um, you know, just using my last example of, you know, when you're walking into a meeting and you sort of, I, I work with a lot of professionals that, you know, it's a knee jerk reaction. I was there. So I, you know, I'm very empathic to it. But it is so easy for us to put the blame on the other person or the mm-hmm. other team and say, you know what, I really don't feel like my unit is uh, really listening. I don't feel like I'm being heard. My ideas are being, um, you know, jumped on or given credit. And what I like to do is, is I, I like to flip that around and say, well, how can you take responsibility for making sure your ideas are heard? Assuming that, you know, I know you don't have any control over other people. What can you do and how can you show up? And so you know, when you're intentional, you can say, you know what, here are the results. Here, here's the why behind why I'm proposing this idea, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. So now you're bringing in the rule of three, you're giving them three reasons why your proposal is a good idea. And let's just take it even further. Now you're interrupted, because that's another common thing, like being interrupted in the meeting. Mm-hmm. Now you're saying, excuse me, I'm not finished yet. You know, and you could feel free to lift the little finger, you know, like, excuse me, I'm not finished yet. You know, a lot of people just allow themselves to be shut down. But just because someone interrupts you doesn't mean they're allowed to keep talking, you know. So there is also speaking without apology, just letting them know, you know, well, let me finish my thought. And it does, it's not confrontational. It's just like, hey, you know, give me some airtime. I had started speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, could you yeah, so- like, I, I had three things that I wanted to talk about. I only got to two. Let me get to the one last one. And right. Then- yeah, I'm almost finished. I have yeah. one more point. Um, it's really important. I think it's going to make it, you know, I think it would, I think this could be impactful. Let's just talk about it. Let's get it out on the table and owning your power. And that's really what speaking without apology is. It's, it's owning your power. But a lot of times people confuse the word power 
with control. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are several, we, we know there are a lot of people in this world that abuse power, but power is also influence. And my mission in life is to help you know, develop leaders of influence. And if you want to be a leader of influence, you have to be, be willing to speak what you want to say in, in, in as an authentic way as possible, but don't, don't allow yourself. And I really do say that, you know, in every aspect that you can think of, don't allow yourself to be shut down because it's not that they're shutting you down. It's like, it's akin to like moving to the back mm -hmm. of the room or, or sort, you know, rolling your chair to the end of the room and, and not even being in the conversation anymore. So that's a typical example. When you talk about this, it all makes sense, but putting it into practice, I, I even hear myself saying this and I have a military background and I'm like, I just hear that B word because sometimes it's put on the, the and it, for those that didn't, ex I, it's the cuss word. I don't want to say it, yeah. um, but yeah. it, the people are being called bossy or uh, yeah. the other one. And it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's, a, I would say it leans into a fear, especially for women to be mm. perceived as such. So how do you help deter people away from not thinking that they're going into that perception, but taking back their power. Well, the first way, it's funny, you hit on uh, something I wanted to share anyway, um, okay. <laughs> because the, the first way um, you start speaking without apology, the first step to speaking without apology is to answer one question. And this question will change your life. Before you move into it, before you get on a phone call, before you get in a meeting, before you get write an email, the first thing you want to ask yourself is, how do I want to be perceived? All right. How do I want to be perceived? Because the answer to that question, your answer to that question will dictate how others respond to you and support your advancement. So, and you're tweaking it, you know, you're tweaking it for different people. There's not like a one, one time script that you use for everybody. But you know, if you're clear, if you're talking to a peer versus a manager versus a partner versus, you know, I'll go back to the car salesman, you know, someone's trying to sell you a car. How do I want to be perceived? You know, do I want to show that I'm an educated consumer that I've done my homework or do I want them to lead me and give me all the bells and whistles and then give me the, you know, the $20,000 markup, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so it's really just answering that question. How do I want to be perceived? And then that's the clarity. That's the intention. And you go from there, pop in your rule of three, and then the conversation goes forward. But if you, you show up, it's a lot of energy. It's Thank you for listening to another episode of Lead Into It. Don't miss any episodes by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or following on Spotify. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Thanks and have a great day.